If you saw my roundup from Apple's latest developer conference a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that the big news is that iPads are becoming much more like Macs. Well, I've decided to find out whether iPad OS 26 is going to be the final nail in the coffin for your MacBook. This week, I did something I've never done before. I signed up to Apple's developer program and installed the developer beta version of iPad OS 26 on my iPad. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff I want to show you in this video, specifically how it's possible to bring your iPad even closer to feeling like a Mac than ever before. But there is a catch. You see, Apple don't want you to have a Mac on your iPad because capitalism. I think that pretty much sums it up. So Apple have had to come up with some clever ways of keeping the Mac uniquely Mac and the iPad uniquely iPad and also keeping their customers happy who want them to be closer together. And that all means everything's a bit quirky. We're going to get to some of those quirks really soon. Now, even though the iPad OS 26 experience works on my trusty iPad mini, it's not super easy to show you. So I'm going to be demoing a lot of this on this massive 11 inch M3 edition iPad Air. Side note, I've really enjoyed testing this out as a possible laptop replacement. So if you want to see my full blown mini versus air comparison, don't forget to subscribe because I promise it's coming really soon. Let's start with some good news. And that is that iPad OS 26, at least in this developer beta that I've been testing is for the most part, really nice and snappy to use. The liquid glass effect isn't too overbearing. The pointer is pointier and easier to spot. The improved window resizing and multi-window functionality is great, especially in the extended desktop experience that you get with the iPad Air or Pro models. And the Files app combined with a new preview app is definitely enhanced and it makes it much easier to move things around and find what you're looking for with all that customization. Audio sources also works really well and with this upgrade there is now a journal app and even a dedicated phone app right on your iPad. Now I've only got the Wi-Fi only versions but I'm pretty sure even if you have the cellular version of an iPad it won't work as a standalone phone unless there's an iPhone nearby. And that will be the capitalism again. And there are some other odd things, especially if we're thinking about holding this up to a Mac as a comparison. For instance, the new menu bar for iPad is pretty cool, possibly even a bit of a game changer, but it feels a bit odd just floating up here in the middle of the screen. Why don't they just pop it over there on the left like every other desktop app I've ever used on a Mac? Also, you can use Apple's own magic keyboards, which come with a trackpad that let you use a lot of the swipes and the gestures that you'll be used to from a Mac, or you can connect your own Bluetooth mouse and keyboards. But unlike a Mac, many custom commands like sideways scrolling on this vertical mouse still won't work on an iPad as they would on my Mac. That's kind of annoying. And whilst I do appreciate the flexible and the freeform window sizing and snapping, the older split screen view is gone. You just can't get it back. That's probably going to annoy some people. Likewise, over on my Mac, I can always have multiple streams of video running at any time. That might mean that I'm listening to a podcast while I'm watching an edit back or catching up on the latest Netflix show while I'm on an important business meeting. Yeah, just kidding. No one ever wants to have important business meetings with me. But on an iPad, even though you can have multiple apps open at once, only one video or audio stream is possible at any one time. See, told you quirky. And before we go on, if you haven't already got this installed on your Mac, you'll probably kick yourself. It's Clean My Mac and they're also sponsoring this video. I've been using this for years and years. Look, here's the proof and honestly, it's probably one of the most important apps I'd recommend if you want your Mac to run as well as possible. But here's the big surprise. Despite the name, it doesn't just clean your Mac. I mean, it does do that really well, actually, by getting rid of all the files that are living on your Mac rent free, but you don't need like cookies and cached files and language files, and they can take up a surprising amount of space. As well as freeing up space, Clean My Mac also automatically updates all your apps, scans for threats and vulnerabilities, finds duplicate files and photos for you. It even runs maintenance tasks to make everything feel faster. Plus, it'll remove unnecessary apps that are hiding away and stealing your memory. And I mean, properly burns away every last trace of them far better than just dragging them to the bin like a newbie. My favorite new feature is called the space lens and that lets you visualize where all your storage has gone so you can easily clean it all up. In my case, yeah, it's mostly gigantic video files from these YouTube projects. Whoops. If you want the best way to keep your Mac running as smooth as a bold man in a wind tunnel, check out my special code in the description or scan this link right here. You can try it free for seven days and they even offer a 30 day money back guarantee. 
What are you waiting for? Go and have a look and see how dirty your Mac really is. Let's get back to iPads versus Macs and let's have a look at some other things. Now, I know a lot of people, especially the kind who have important business meetings, end up having to use the full versions of Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and even the horror that is the Teams app. And these all work on my Mac without any hassle. On an iPad though, it's a bit of a different story. Thinking about using PowerPoint in a virtual meeting, for instance, I can't ever use my iPad like this because even if I connect it to a screen and share my PowerPoint, I don't get presenter view or I don't get to see the other participants. That sucks because I'd love to use my iPad in this way. The other iPad versions of other Office apps are also really odd and they don't behave in the same way the desktop apps do on a Mac or a PC. Also, I regularly use my Mac in clamshell mode, especially sat at a desk, and I don't always want two screens or have to use the iPad keyboard case to type on, but clamshell mode on an iPad just isn't a thing yet. If you close it when you're connected to a display, the entire thing shuts down. What else is there? Well, I'm no programmer, but I'm pretty sure that having access to the Mac's terminal or even a basic coding app will be exactly the kind of thing to get a coder excited about using an iPad in a really the powerful way, but nope, it's not possible. And hear me out on this one. I know iPads are really personal devices, but I'm a bit surprised that we haven't seen multi-user access crop up yet, you know, like you get on a Mac. Let's say for instance, that a budget conscious family is wanting a device that they can use for younger kids to play games on, maybe for the adults to use for banking and occasional productivity work and for older children to get studies and homework done on. You'd really struggle to recommend an iPad over a Mac because you'd want them to have some of those things locked away. Now, I think there are possible workarounds to that scenario using focus modes, but it's a bit of a dirty way to have to work your iPad. And if you're thinking about spending up to a grand on a portable computer setup, iPads have just never been designed for sharing and this update doesn't change that at all. And that brings us to some of Apple's own apps. One of the things I've been most happy about as an Apple customer is a pro app like Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software I use to make these videos. I paid pretty good money for this over five years ago, almost 300 quid, and it has been consistently supported and upgraded ever since and probably always will be for as long as I have a Mac that can run it. I was super excited to see Final Cut emerge for iPad, but not not so much that I was prepared to pay a monthly subscription for it. I could just about swallow that if it was a one-time payment and if the iPad app could do the thing that my Mac version could do. Spoiler alert, it can't. And it can't even do some of the basic stuff that I need. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem for me to think about using my iPad as my main device as a content creator. Finally, when all the work is done, I love to use my iPad as a portable gaming device. And the experience on the 13-inch iPad Air has been absolutely awesome. The icing on the cake is when I hook it up to my monitor for some full screen gaming, just like having a console. At least it would have been the icing on the cake if that actually worked, which it doesn't. Hmm. So in conclusion, at the time of making this video, at least, I don't think it is quite time to ditch your Mac. I'm really sorry about that. If you were hoping, I would say it was. If you disagree though, and you're already at the iPad only stage, let me know in the comments and let me know your use cases. I'm genuinely curious to know more. In the meantime, if you want to know a bunch of ways to play awesome console games on your iPad, I made a video all about it right over here. See you next time, folks.